1609, Johannes Kepler, one of the finest astronomers of all time, gave two laws, one of which was the planets like our Earth revolve around stars like the Sun in elliptical orbits. This law was then studied by another genius, Sir Isaac Newton, and this book got published in the year 1687. He noticed that the fall of an apple and revolution of planets around Sun was the same outcome of the same phenomenon. He stated that objects which have mass attract each other by following this particular identity and it's commonly known as the universal law of gravitation and the force was named gravity. Now using these ideas we can now predict the trajectory of a planet around the star. But a question that can arise is if the star pulls the planet then why doesn't it bump into it? It's because it also has a velocity vector away from the star and the net velocity vector makes it revolve. So it seems quite easy to predict such trajectories. But it's not that simple. Hardly does a planet alone revolve. There are other planets too. And if their orbits are close enough, there is not one but two bodies to attract that planet. So it causes discrepancies between the predicted and the actual trajectory. 1781 Uranus got discovered. Time to define the trajectory. Uranus was quite far away from the other planets and it was improbable that there will be some significant discrepancies. But guess what? There were discrepancies where it was not expected to show as there were no planets nearby. Then why was it so? Was Newton's universal law ineffective there? Well, not really. Two mathematicians, Urban Lee Verrier and John Coach Adams, gave a prediction. There was another planet nearby Uranus disturbing its path, pulling it towards itself. Then they gave this relation which stated the error in heliocentric longitude, which is a measurement for the planet's position, followed this particular equation. Here the first term itself is the disturbance of the orbit of Uranus due to Neptune.